Factors of frequency stability The addition of wind and solar to power grids both internationally has raised concern about how much inertia is needed to maintain frequency stability The ability of a power system to maintain steady frequency following an imbalance between supply and demand. Discussion of inertia must include the interplay of inertia and the many factors that determine the ability of the grid to successfully respond to a contingency event. Some of these factors are listed in table, which introduces how changing each factor by itself can impact the ability of the system to balance the supply and demand after a contingency event. Generator inertia is our starting point for examining how fast the system must respond to a contingency event. This section details how generator inertia resists changes in system frequency. Under normal conditions, electricity demand is met by the constant injection of energy into the grid from many power plants. We will illustrate this using an example where 30,000 megawatts MW of demand about the average demand in the state of Florida is met by 30, 1,000 megawatts generators. If one of these generators were to fail, the remaining generators online would only provide 29,000 megawatts. However, the loads on the system would still extract 30,000 megawatts of power from the system, with the extra 1,000 megawatts of power being extracted from the inertia of the remaining online generators. Generators. In this example, we can estimate the rate at which frequency declines, which will begin to provide us some indication of the amount of time we have to replace the power from the lost generator and arrest the frequency decline. At the moment the contingency occurs, each of the 29 remaining generators has stored inertia that can be extracted to provide extra power to the system, above and beyond the power provided by continuous injection of steam in the individual power plants. Here, if we assume the generators are all identical, each must provide an extra 34 megawatts of power from stored energy 1000 megawatts divided by 29 generators. Figure illustrates the source of power from each generator in the post-contingency state. The constant injection of energy from fuel provides 1000 megawatts and 34 megawatts is drawn from stored energy, meaning each generator is providing 1034 megawatts. Units of energy and inertia, electrical energy is most commonly measured in terms of the amount of power measured in watts delivered over some period of time, typically an hour. The most common units are kilowatt hours, kilowatt hour, megawatt hours, MWH, and gigawatt hours, GWH. For example, one kilowatt hour is equal to the amount of energy delivered by one kilowatt, 1000 watts for one hour or 100 watts for 10 hours. This unit is useful for measuring the energy consumed in a house. Megawatt hours are often used to measure energy produced by individual power plants, while gigawatt hours are used to measure energy used in a large power grid. Power system engineers typically describe the inertia of a generator in terms of stored rotational kinetic energy, so inertia has the same units of energy power delivered over a period of time. However, because inertia typically only responds for a short amount of time seconds, inertia is often measured with units of MW seconds or GW seconds. So, a generator with 1 GWs of inertia can deliver 1 gigawatt of power for, for 1 second from its stored energy. 1 GWs is equal to 0.27 megawatt hours or 278 kilowatt hours. As each generator uses up its inertia, it slows down. The relationship between rotational speed and energy allows us to calculate how much each generator will slow down and the corresponding decline in frequency. In our example, we assume each generator rotating at 60 Hz has about 4 GWs 1.1 megawatt hour of stored energy in actuality, there is a large range of stored energy depending on generator type, as we discuss later. In the first second, each generator has to provide about 34 megawatts of extra power from its stored energy and so will need to give up about 34 MWs, or a little under 1% of its stored energy. Figure plots the relationship between extracted energy and frequency for this example. The total system starts at 60 Hz with 115 GWs of stored energy, and the load extracts about 1 GWs after 1 second due to the loss of 1 gigawatt of generation, resulting in a frequency of about 59.7 Hz. If no other action occurs, this will be the frequency at 1 second. Figure shows the frequency as a function of time, this is similar to the plot in figure, but here we are focusing on the first few seconds. In this example, the generator inertia provides about 2 seconds for the system to respond before it falls below 59.5 Hz. Assuming UFLS occurs at 59.5 Hz, 
This means the system has about two seconds to take corrective action. The grid big machines, many power plants are in the range of 100 to 1000 megawatts. A typical small 100 megawatts generator has about 0.4 GWs of stored energy, or about 110 kilowatt hours. This is equal to the kinetic energy of about 150 mid-sized sedans traveling at 60 miles per hour, or enough to power an average U.S. household for about four days. The kinetic energy stored in a large, 1000 megawatts generator about 4 GWs could power an average United States household for more than a month. This very simplified case assumes a constant power draw of 30,000 megawatts and does not consider the reduction in load that results as the frequency frequency declines. It also assumes the inertia of each generator is the same. However, in real systems, inertia varies by generator size and type. For generators of the same type, a 200 megawatts generator would have roughly twice the inertia of a 100 megawatts generator. Inertia scales with generator size because generators with larger capacity have more physical mass in the turbine, generator, and other rotating machinery. But two equal size generators of different types may have different inertia due to the differences in the size and shape of the rotating equipment. This is reported as the inertia constant of a generator or generator type. The combination of inertia constant and total capacity of online generators determines the total inertia provided by the generators. Our simple example is a small system, particularly when compared to the two large United States grids. Grid size is a key factor in determining the total grid inertia and therefore how fast the frequency declines. Figure provide an example where we double the grid size resulting in twice as much load and twice as many generators resulting in twice the effective grid inertia. However, the case still uses 1000 megawatts generators, so the contingency size does not increase. This leads to a large increase in the amount of time available for other systems to correct the imbalance. A generator's inertia constant represents how much stored energy it has per unit of rated capacity. This means the inertia constant represents how long the generator could generate at its rated power using only its stored rotational kinetic energy, so the inertia constant is measured in units of seconds. A 1 gigawatt generator with an inertia constant of 4 seconds could deliver 1 gigawatt of power for 4 seconds or has 4 GWs of stored energy. Typical power plants have inertia constants in the range of 2 to 7 seconds, with hydro plants having the lowest inertia, and gas plants having the highest inertia per unit of capacity. Grid size is a critical factor, because inertia increases proportionally with grid size larger grids have inherently more inertia, however, contingency size does not inherently scale with grid size. Finally, it is important to note that the amount of inertia available from a generator is independent of power output and depends only on whether it is online committed and spinning at grid frequency. For example, a committed synchronous generator rated at 1000 MW provides the same amount of inertia when it is generating 600 MW as when it is generating 1000 MW. As long as the generator is synchronized to the grid, the amount of inertia cannot be changed by any action taken by the generator operator. Load inertia and damping small but not insignificant, the second element to consider is the response of actual load to changes in frequency. This involves two factors, the inertia of loads and the change in actual energy demand as a function of frequency. Unlike an electric light, which shuts off instantly, an electric ceiling fan will continue to turn for some time after it is turned off. This represents inertia similar to that in electric generators. Certain types of motors add inertia to the grid. Another impact results from the actual change in electric demand that happens with changes in frequency. In our previous examples, we assumed the load remains constant after the contingency event. However, for some loads, including many motors used in industrial processes, the actual electricity demand will decrease at lower frequencies. This is analogous to the decreased amount of power needed to operate a vehicle at 55 miles per hour compared to 60 miles per hour. Contingency size, a key factor, in our simple example, a single generator failure leaves an initial imbalance of 1000 megawatts. However, the failure could be larger or smaller depending on the mix of generators and transmission system. Figure shows the impact of contingency size on the decline in frequency. It includes the previous assumptions, including response from loads. The larger case assumes a contingency of 2000 megawatts, 
which produces a much faster rate of frequency decline, resulting in the frequency dropping below 59.5 Hz in about one second assuming the base generator inertia. Alternatively, if the contingency were 500 MW the frequency would drop more slowly, giving the system more time to respond. In this example, the system would have more than 6 seconds to respond. UFLS settings, keeping the lights on by turning some of them off, the power system's UFLS settings represent the final main element determining how much time is needed to respond. UFLS is initiated by circuit breakers that monitor frequency and automatically disconnect certain parts of the grid rapidly and without warning if the frequency drops below a certain setting. UFLS protocols actually use multiple settings that progressively shed more and more load as frequency drops lower and lower. The basic idea is that a relatively small amount of load is shed at some initial frequency, such as 59.5 Hz. United States Hopefully this is enough to correct the imbalance with minimal impact to consumers, but if it is not, additional load shedding occurs until either the frequency decline is corrected, or in an extreme case, the entire grid is shut down. The choice of initial UFLS setting impacts how much time the system has to respond, as illustrated in figure. Our base case example from the previous section indicates that this level of inertia would require PFR and other systems to correct the imbalance in about 2.2 seconds before an UFLS event at 59.5 Hz. Reducing the UFLS setting to 59.3 Hz would increase this time by about 1.3 seconds, providing a total of 3.5 seconds to respond. How fast can the system respond? The role of traditional generator frequency response. After a contingency event, PFR acts to increase power from the remaining generators and temporarily replace energy from the failed generator. Providing PFR from a generator requires it to have the necessary equipment I.E. an active governor and be operating at less than full output I.E., providing headroom to increase output. The headroom requirement makes PFR very different from inertia which is independent of its output. Only a generator that can increase output and sustain that output for a period of time can provide PFR. Upon a decline in frequency, generator governors detect this change and act to open valves and take other actions that increase the flow of fuel, steam, and or water to generator turbines. Historically, the combination of traditional inertia from both generators and loads plus PFR has been sufficient to address contingency events in most of the United States. But as the grid evolves with the addition of VG and other new technologies, system planners and operators are deploying new ways to maintain stable frequency even with declining amounts of conventional inertia.